no god is gone. Then, as you can imagine, I've got plans. Big plans. But without my reputation, those plans go the way of Gary, Indiana. So, short story long, I'm gonna need you to make amends. Hey guys, Ryan here, and Gaz is sitting this week out, but he'll be back next week. Right now I'm gonna break down episode four of Preacher called The Tombs. Before I get started, make sure you're subscribed to GameSpot Universe for all of these Preacher breakdowns. Also, we're going to Comic-Con this week, so look out for all those videos from San Diego. Now, obviously guys, there are a ton of spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen episode four, you should not be here right now. Go watch that and come right back. All right, so episode four starts off in hell. I've never been so excited to return to hell Obviously last season we spent a lot of time with Arseface, Hitler, and the Saint of Killers in Hell, but this is the first time we've seen it in Season 3. Now the Saint of Killers is finally freed from his chambers where he's been reliving the horrors of his life over and over again, and then he's taken to an elevator. Or should I say, the Hellevator. Sorry for the joke. Blame Gaj for that one. So they go down to the ninth floor in Hell, which is possibly a nod to the Nine Circles of Hell from Dante's Inferno. In case you're wondering, that includes Limbo, Lust, Gluttony, Greed, Anger, Hearsay, violence, fraud, and number nine, treachery. And on the ninth floor is Satan's office. This is pretty awesome because this is the first time we get to see Satan in the TV show, who obviously plays a big role in the comic books. And a lot of CGI was used during the sequence, but I was totally for it. It's awesome to finally get the meetup between Satan and the Saint of Killers on the show. Quick little detail here, it sounds like Satan was talking to Allfather Diarnik on the phone, and in his office with him is Sidney, the Angel of Death. Okay, thrice blessed off of it. Uh, okay, Docs is bye-bye. Who is also in the comic books. Maybe not Sydney specifically, but the Angel of Death is. I absolutely love the Midnight Run joke as Satan is quoting the late great Dennis Farina during his conversation with Sydney. Relax, have a sandwich, drink a glass of milk. He's from Midnight Runs. Run, it's Midnight Run. Sydney, sit down, relax, have a sandwich, drink a glass of milk. You heard it in the beginning of this video, but the dig at Gary, Indiana was hysterical. So Satan punishes the Santa killers for breaking out of hell, and the angel of death whips him repeatedly in the back, but it really doesn't seem to affect the Santa killers at all. Warning, comic book spoilers, but this happens a little differently in the books. Satan and the Saint of Killers do meet up, but it doesn't go so well for Satan. The cold soul of the Saint of Killers actually freezes the fires of hell. And Satan did try to beat the hell out of him, but couldn't. He actually whipped them down to the bone, just like it happened here. Satan struck a deal with the Saint to take the place of the Angel of Death. And instead of using a sword, he made those two guns that never miss. And after all that happened, the Saint of Killers' first victim was Satan himself. Now, back at Madame Boyd's place, Tulip has her at gunpoint, and she's a total badass. I thoroughly enjoyed this entire sequence to break Madame Boyd out of her headquarters. You crazy bitch! Ain't I though? Now, back in the day, we learned that Jesse was a sort of ringleader of the tombs. Welcome. You motherless goat humble! It sounds like the whole town has some things in common with TC, although TC would prefer chickens. We also learned that Jesse, and later on that Jody, was a bit of a fan of Gladiator. Are you not entertained? Like a really big fan of Gladiator. You got anything fun planned for the weekend? Uh, uh, maybe go see Gladiator again. Gladiator. So it turns out that the tombs were a sort of opportunity for fighters to get back their soul, or at least a portion of their soul. The problem is, is that Jody was a sort of champion of the tombs and would never be defeated. Keeping with the devil theme, that is Black Rebel Motorcycle Club's Beat the Devil's Tattoo playing during the tomb fighting. Now, this entire time when I was watching, I really didn't believe that Jesse had gone bad. I think it's all an act in order to ultimately save Cassidy. Check out this shot of the traffic lights. I definitely feel like it's an homage to Twin Peaks. And if you've watched Twin Peaks, then you definitely know that that's implying some impending doom for some of the characters. Tulip, maybe? We also learn more about the background between Madame Boyd and Jesse. So it turns out that Jesse had dated Sabina Boyd back in the day. This was after he had met Tulip already, though. 
Remember, in the show, Tulip and Jesse knew each other as young kids. We saw that back in season one. But in the comic books, they met at a much later age in Texas. Get it? Got it? We know Jesse loved Gladiator, but he was maybe also a fan of the court jester. It may be the key to the whole plan, get it? Got it. Good. Or maybe he was a big David Spade fan. If you shake that cage one more time, I'm going to start my own little earthquake on your face. Get it? Got it? Good. <laughs> I literally laughed out loud at the worst person she ever loved title card. That was hysterical, guys. Back now to Jesse and Jody, and it's clear that Jesse is trying to keep Cassidy alive. But I have a big question, how the hell is Cassidy not a better fighter than this? Remember back in season one, he kicked the shit out of a bunch of vampire hunters. And now he's just getting his ass handed to him in the tombs. Don't really get it. Then we get another big time comic book Easter egg as Jody lights his cigarette using a specific lighter. It's the communism lighter that we saw in the comic books. Of course, this was a hand-me-down from Jesse's father who got it from the actual real John Wayne during the Vietnam War. Now, something tells me that Jesse is not gonna leave Angelville without that lighter in hand. Now, this bit was a lot of fun. While Jody is over getting a keg, Jesse is getting some ice cream and he's also gonna ship Cassidy's cut up body. So this is how you finally get rid of me, is it? Huh? My bloody mail. I'm not getting rid of you, Cass. Saving your ass. I absolutely love the Empire Strikes Back reference when Cassidy is talking about the Tauntaun. You remove somebody else's skin, you wrap me in it, disguising me as that person. Do you know what I mean? That's the stupidest. That would never work. Of course it would. Not in a million years. Will you go and tell that to Luke Skywalker? So Jesse did in fact save his life, but he also cut him up into a bunch of pieces, and he plans to send him to New Orleans. He didn't sneak him up anywhere. The Tauntaun kept him from freezing. Saving me. Give me a bloody break, will you? Did anyone else notice that he's sending him second class mail? That was funny. Then we get more of Sabina's flashbacks. She basically blames Jesse for her brother's death. He went to go fight Jesse after she was dumped and Jesse strangled him to death. It's not totally clear if it was self-defense though. But I think the most important part of all of this, Kenny might be the first person that Jesse ever killed. Later on, we get a shot of Tulip at a stoplight and without her noticing, God races by her on a motorcycle. Thought it was fun and basically just showing that God is definitely on a bender. Cassidy ends up putting himself back together and he returns to the tombs to fight. Then he squares off against Jesse. And basically the whole time, Jesse is trying not to hurt him too much because he wants him to live. He wants to save his friend and not let Jody and TC have their way with him. Now at the same moment, Tulip walks into the tombs and sees Jesse doing all of this. You can see it in her face that she doesn't even recognize the person that Jesse has become. And it's clear that Angelville and the tombs bring out a very dark side of Jesse. In Jesse's defense though, he did warn Cassidy about the person that he is when he goes back to Angelville. For a moment there, we all thought that Cassidy was dead, but they can't kill off one of the best characters of this show. And it turns out that he took a skin suit and escaped from the tombs. It took you so long. Couldn't see. Before I can slip on. Skin suit. Still the best way to break a man free. <laughs> now a big moment here as Cassidy finally comes clean with Tulip and tells her that he loves her. But she doesn't feel the same way about him. Remember, Cassidy has that love potion that he got from Grandma and he decides against using it on Tulip. I was honestly surprised that he didn't use the love potion on her. We know how much he loves her and how many horrible things he's done in his life, but he wouldn't cross that line. So by the end, you kind of feel really bad for Cassidy as he's leaving and catching a bus for New Orleans. Also joining him on the bus is Featherstone. Um, it turns out she's heading back to maybe the New Orleans headquarters of the Grail. And finally, Sabina, AKA Madame Boyd, tells Tulip how to break the spell that Jesse's under. The only way to do it is to kill Grandma. But can Tulip truly trust Sabina? I don't think so. Finally, back in hell, Satan tells the Saint of Killers that he needs him to bring back two escaped souls and he needs them alive. Could that be Hitler and Eugene? I'm convinced that one of those souls has to be Hitler, but Eugene, we don't really know because he never deserved to be down there in the first place. Let me know in the comments below who you think Satan is going after. Also, next week's episode is called The Coffin. And if you've read the comic books, then you know exactly where this is headed. I'll see you guys then. On the next episode of AMC's Preacher. How long have you been at Empire? 89 years. How about you? Almost 200. If it breaks the spell, why don't we just kill her? Please help me. Real is taking me prisoner. You up for a fist fight?
I saved your life. Drop it. Every moment is owed to me. 